Hey guys, it's Ellen. Welcome to my channel. Are you to, are you new to watercolor and are you having a stressful day? Well, today is your lucky day. I'm going to talk about playing with watercolor, wet on wet techniques, spraying and moving paint around, just playing with colors themselves, and then just doing simple patterns to create a real kind of fun abstract doodle that just takes the stress of your day away. I think any beginner can do this, even an advanced person can do this because then you can create your own advanced you know, patterns and, and using the techniques that I show you, creating more intricate, intricate designs. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'd love to hear if, if abstract works for you and I'd love to hear if painting art or even using watercolor is distressful for you. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear below. Also, uh, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and, and uh, a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope it can relieve some stress for you today. Let's get painting. All right, guys, let me go over my supplies. I have a piece of Arsh, 100% cotton cold pressed paper. This is nine by 12 piece. I just taped it down with some Scotch Magic tape on a thick piece of cardboard. Got my paints here and my palette and they're always in the description box. Um, it's hard to see, but I have paper towels right here. Uh, I'll be using, um, I don't know if I'll be using them, but just to let you know, to have them handy is the, uh, a flat wash brush. It's like a one inch. I have a three eighth inch one. It's kind of on an angle. Just these are really cheap brushes. I have my Princeton eight long round, just in case if I want to use really pointy kind of stuff. Um, a real key thing to use for this tutorial is to have a spray bottle. You can get these little cheap spray bottles at any craft store, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, whatever. I have water jars up here. <laughs> my paints are just kind of we're all done. I um, might be using gouache. I don't know. We'll see if I get into the mood of splattering or something. So this is kind of a fun thing to do. I mean, I think there's some other people on YouTube that do this, but I, th I thought, let me, let me play with it. And I like to do live tutorials, like you're actually in the class with me or hanging out with me. Um, sometimes the edited ones just don't get the feel of like when you're making mistakes and doing things at, in real time. I might stop the video to dry the picture and come back but mostly it's in real time. So I'm gonna play with this little fun technique for this abstract. You put your horizon line here and you're gonna be painting like just really thick watercolor paint, right almost from the tube going across like you were painting like almost an abstract landscape. This is where you would come in to play with like a small flat wash brush. I'm gonna get a little water on it and I'm gonna grab my yellow and the peacock to make a nice green. You know, so I have a thick green. I'll just give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to put some green going across, just like that, All right? Maybe make a little bit bigger, thicker lines. But it's really thick, almost like gouache. You see that? And then I can go in and play and clean up my brush. I could play around with actually adding in peacock blue itself. That's a little too thick because you can't see that you see it's kind of like doing like a dry brush kind of thing so I've got the peacock blue right now it just looks like a line right I'm cleaning off my brush you hear that clanking noise I can grab a little bit of yellow right from the tube just kind of dab at that do a little dibby dabs paint some on top of that green same thing with like red or pink so I have cabin red light. I have bright rose here. I grab a little red. Maybe I'll make this a little thicker. I don't know. I just feel like it. You know, there's no rules to this one. Just play with the colors. Um, grab the pink. This is bright rose. Put some pink over here and here. Okay. And I have um, ultramarine deep blue here. And there's a Prussian blue up here. I didn't activate this one. I'm just going to make it darker. I'm going to add some blue going here. Kind of thick. I can grab this green back again. I think you kind of know where I'm going with this. Grab the yellow. Mix it with some green again. Get a light green. Go back in here. Even just grab yellow itself. Back in there. So you just doing that horizon line. You want to grab some peacock, oh actually, I'm not going to grab the peacock blue, I'm going to grab this verdier blue, which I love this color. 
My brush is a little dirty, but put that blue and little spots like that. Um, I have a violet color. We can add that in. Where are we? It's going to be hiding now. Here we go. Mine was dry, so I'll just squeeze some of these too. By the way, just like um, people always wonder, like, do, do you act? I'm like, yeah, I activate them. I just spray my dried watercolors with this spray and it activates them and gets them all wet so you can use them again. I don't, you always just use from the tube. I just put the tube in here when I have extra. So see, I'm just doing some purple here and here, maybe a little bit here, do another one here. I'm getting very colorful with this. But see how thick that paint is? It does not water down. And there's a reason for that. Might go back in and grab some Verdier Blue. Doing some little dashes. And I'm gonna go back and grab some yellow. Just lime green, maybe even more yellow. And I think I'm gonna grab a little bit of red and put some there in there. Like I said, do whatever you want. I'm just playing around with colors. Now, now we're gonna use the spray bottle in a second. And I think you know where we're going with this. <laughs> so we've got these colors that are thick and right on the paper. And now we're gonna play with spraying them and holding the paper on an angle and see what happens to the color. Okay, here we go. We're at like on a 45 degree angle. And you know, this is where you use the paper towel to kind of mop up the, the uh, watercolor. Spray and see if it starts to bleed. I'm still spraying. And then you spray the paper and it will bleed down. I just think this is fun. Now I'm spraying the paper. See, so this is not wet enough here. So I'm spraying and spraying it. Now it's very wet. Oh, the fun. <laughs> you get all your frustrations out in one sitting. If you're having a crappy, uh, crappy, crappy, crappy day, see now it's pooling down on, on this table. You definitely want to have a surface where it's, you know, uh, you can clean up easily. And it was pooling, you're just taking your paper towel and grabbing this color here. While it's still damp, you can play around with the brushes, getting some areas even wetter again. So I'm cleaning off my brush. Maybe this didn't translate, so I put the purple. And then just wipe this again. Right? Is that fun or what? You can kind of move it. It doesn't have to be straight down. You can kind of move it, groove it, then go back down <laughs> and see where the watercolor is going. Now it's still so damp. You can grab like a the Princeton 8 long round velvet touch or a, just a round. Just grab some peacock blue, play around with it. You could just tap some really wet watercolor at this point. Let's see what happens. Do a little tippy taps. See, just tapping a little bit wet color. It is making drips. If you want that green. See? This is the play part. It's dripping. I see it's still pooling down here, by the way, because that's where the paper ends. And the water ends. Look at that fun stuff. This one kind of just sat there right this line so I'm gonna just play with that in color and moving that line drippy drip add some more peacock blue and yeah, using your yellow see what happens to that now if it's getting just a weird straight line you can splatter it even more just to make it softer and not this like weird line I'm holding it on an angle dripping it this is the fun stuff guys <laughs> Isn't that fun? Kind of cool, right? Playing around with the spray bottle. Now I sprayed all this mess up here. You think we're gonna leave that side alone? No, heck no. So we're gonna just add some more blues. I really want this more blue on this side. Is that Verdier blue? 
about some ultramarine blue and I think because we sprayed that side if we spray this side that's all gonna kind of fall down you can do a technique where you grab the flat wash brush clean some clean water and just kind of go across here and then bring some water down here it's a little less invasive than the spray <laughs> if you don't have a spray bottle this is the kind of technique you can do with this and you go back in and grab some of that lovely colors again see I'm using the flat wash brush it's wet it should bleed down the more loose this paint is the more it's going to bleed so I'll put more water in that blue see now it's starting to bleed or you can kind of play around with you know maneuvering it grabbing more water adding it to the paper it's getting a little muddy here a little gray but that's okay if you don't want it gray you want it bright grab that violet I really like playing with the colors is that violet why not right an ultramarine blue and then you get this nice purple kind of going here it's kind of fun add the water and it's going to kind of bleed oh the joy <laughs> and I could just grab some water it's what well, I mean paint color itself and go across again you can just grab the real thick paint play around with that I just find this something to do when you're like <sighs> you're having a bad day you're really having a bad day everything seems to be having a bad day I mean this this it's been really tough lately and everyone's having a hard time and this is just something to do with watercolor to get you out of that funk and so you're playing with color and spraying and moving color and I'm gonna grab the paper towel see I'm just kind of lifting up some of the color here and then I'm gonna flip it back over what do we have that's just really cool by itself right that whole fun spray the color I mean you have so many combinations you can do and I don't know if because it's still too damp if you wanted to do some little splattering if it's going to splatter that well um, I have some white gouache like I said I think this is still not I think this is too dry at this point but we can try and play around with it let's do a little test and you water down some gouache Remember, it kind of repels where it hits. Let's see. It's kind of laying on top. Some of it might, in here is a little damp, so it's going to blend nicely. And if you don't want it on the top, don't spray it up there. But we're just having fun. I wanted to do a video about challenging yourself with spraying and moving color and then We'll go back in and start just playing around doing some abstract kind of painting. That was kind of cool, right? You do a rainbow. This would be great for kids to play around with. I mean, they would love to do this. If you have grandkids or your own kids, you're just putting that deep color in. You're tilting it. You're spraying it. You're kind of lifting up the thing. They would have so much fun doing this. So... Now that I did a little spray there, I mean, I could do a little, I kind of keep, well, I don't want to really spray up here with the splattering of the gouache because I really kind of want to make it kind of like a sky. I'm kind of liking this like abstract thing going here. At this point, you can just let it dry. Then we can come back, grabbing some paper towels here. But if you're still, if it's still damp and you want to add some greens, colors, let me grab some Prussian blue and make a nice deep dark green here. Well, it's still a little damp. Let's see what we've got. I'm just adding some darker green in here. Yeah. It might bleed a little bit, but not that much. Just go on here and grab some Prussian blue itself. Putting in some lines. Yeah, it's still kind of bleeding, but I want a little bit darker color in there. You know, you can just go ahead and grab, like I said, some Prussian blue. 
Really just a deep dark blue. All right, so at this point I'm going to let it I'm going to let it dry. And then we're going to play around with painting on top of all this fun splatter mess. But like I said, if you still wanted like here maybe it's a little light if you wanted to play around with adding a little more color, you can just maneuver this. Just take your brush, get some wet watercolor, kind of push it down a little bit. And that one little section you can spray also if you didn't get the color where you wanted it to. Right? You see that? Even though I have the gouache in there, I can still spray that. It's kind of cool. And go back and add some green. I wanted some more green in there. See? All that fun stuff. Just wanted a little bit more green in that section. All right, so I'm going to let it dry and come back. All right, guys, this is where we just play. I'm going to leave the top section alone. I'm not going to touch anything on the top. I'm going to stop playing with the bottom section. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to play with just adding more colors and, you know, patterns and whatnot. I mean, you can just do some nice, simple straight line patterns like this. Create some nice, fun, you know, like little lines that go up and down. And then go across this whole entire thing and go skinny and then get longer. Now it's disappearing in this color. So maybe I'll add some ultramarine blue and do this connecting on this point. See, and then go back with the green. Don't you just love like the real pigment it's still stuck in there on this picture when it dried? See, I can grab some ultramarine blue. If you don't want to do green going across. Could be very blue. I'm just doing these little dash lines that are going vertical. Just straight down. And like, like I said, I can grab some deeper greens in the green section. I'm going over that section again. So now we're just creating some fun patterns, right? Um, I may grab some ultramarine blue, water it down, take the tip of my Princeton 8 Velvet Touch series long round. It's a very skinny tip. And now we're just going to just, we're going to have fun making squiggly lines. They're connecting and not connecting. Just very organic, kind of fun lines. They don't have to be blue, they could be black. Just playing around, going across. And here, like, I can make a bigger, wider one, like this. This is where you let your mind wander and you take away the stress of your day. So maybe I don't want the blue. Maybe I want it more like a black. I have this color called neutral tint. I'm gonna water it down. It's kind of like a deep grayish blue kind of color. I'm gonna go over my blue areas. I think I want a black. Just will stand up against the red better. It could be gold, it's kind of cool, white. See how I'm just making these little patterns? It's just very organic, wiggly kind of patterns, following the lines. This is where the creativity comes in. You have that fun little spray area up top. And now we can kind of do something like this. That's one thing you can do. You know, start to add um, shapes. It can be, you know, nice circular shapes or round shapes. I'm going to take some more green. So I'm going to take peacock blue and my yellow. So I'm having a green color here. I can a little more of green. I'll water it down. So it becomes a little more translucent when you put it on other colors. I'm adding more water. So you want it very wet like this. And then you want to tap it on a paper towel until you get this translucent. So you can add like circles. You know, and then we can go back in or oblong type shapes. And then we're going to go back over those with another color. And you would do this everywhere. You just do it in some places. This is where the doodle part comes in. It's the mindless doodle. Just It's just creating color and patterns and shapes. I'll just kind of, kind of bring them down just in this one section. 
that's weird kind of shape. Maybe a few over here. Not a lot, not the same thing as that one, just a few like this. Right, and then maybe a few that kind of match up in here. Just a few. Right, and as they dry, you can say the peacock blue itself, you can just water this down, maybe add a little green to that. I'm watering it down and tapping on the paper towel, take off the excess water. And then you're going over that color. Like I said, maybe a little bit more blue. You're gonna go over this color that you just painted. I'm just showing you for time-wise. But you see the translucentness and just maybe in this one section you have this kind of cool overlapping abstract design, right? You could do a whole picture like this. Maybe grab some ultramarine blue and water that down. Because now we've got these other two blues. See what happens when you change it up a little more. I'm going a little fast because of time-wise. But I think you guys understand what I'm doing here. Go back and grab the green. It creates this kind of cool little pattern. Oops. Light green. I don't know why my camera sometimes goes dark and light. So you can do that lime green down below here. Maybe little dots. More circles here. Or even just really pale. Put a bunch of them kind of going out here. So this is where you're just going to sit here and you're going to paint all kinds of weird fun shapes and lines. Just trying to give you guys ideas when you're stuck for some um, abstracts or things to do. Now see we have green colors in the green section. If you want to do the same thing with the red, just water down the red and kind of do the red in the red section. A similar thing. With the little dots. You don't have to. I also think it's nice to have some, so you take the white gouache that you have, because it's opaque, and you can kind of do all these kind of fun little squiggly lines with the white too. Going over the some of the colors, even coming out here. You want to just get real creative with the lines and shapes. I really like these flowy lines that kind of connect, almost like waves. There's no right or wrong to any of this. Something relaxing to do. Then you can just put little white dots. Just play with color, shape, pattern. Wet on wet. Maybe the dots can get a little bit bigger. It's always good to step back, by the way, when you're painting something to see how it looks. You might add some white over here to balance the left side. And it's always good to balance the left and the right. So if I have some white on the left, I might want to put some on the right. I'm going through all these little lines again. Um, it just helps balance your eye when you're looking at the composition. So you're going around the page, not just your eye isn't gravitating towards one section. So if there's colors that are really juxtaposing each other, your eye is going to naturally gravitate towards those. So that white really stands out. Do some white dots going across. Boom, 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 across the whole page. See, once you get in the groove of just doing something like this, then it becomes really fun and super therapeutic. Um, you know, this has been a crazy stressful month for many people. Just trying to find some great ideas for you to release that stress. Here I go and add in the white lines. I 
I could do these items all day. <laughs> and that's what you do. You just kind of play around with pattern, shape, spray. You know, I'm going over all those little circles that I did. The gouache is so much fun. I love doing the watercolor at first and then adding some gouache. It's just so cool. It's playing with the paint. It's playing with color. Just one of those things that I enjoy. You might not necessarily not enjoy this, but that's okay. Not everyone likes everything. And the only way you're going to find out if you like something is if you try it. All right. That's what I would do. Just play around. You might want to add some metallic. Um, if you have metallic paints, I have metallic ink. I don't know if I, I might add some gold to play around with this. Let's see. This gold's a little thick. This is an acrylic paint. Acrylic ink, I'm sorry. Add some metallic. Metallics are fun. I didn't mention this, but it will be in the description box. So when I'm painting, I just kind of intuitively grab stuff. So now I'm doing little dots up there in the blue because you're going to see the gold more intensely in a deeper, darker color, less in the light color. But nonetheless, still creative to use it. I'm just going to do little touches of it, not too much. And you go back in. See, these guys are dry now. And you can go and add another layer of color. Oh, that's a little too deep, dark. I wanted it lighter. But don't forget, watercolor will dry lighter. So when it dries, you can put these nice pretty layers in. It's just, it's just fun to experiment. Right? Going across with this peacock blue. And there you go. Just creating something different. This section, maybe I would go back in with the red. See each section that's the color, you might want to go in here and just use like that particular color, red or pink. We lost our pink, we can go add some pink. So I'll do some red ones coming down and then you'll add some pink ones. So I have that bright rose, I can water that down. There we go. Got some nice bright pink, just for a change. Kind of like a little rainbow going here. Get a little duller as it goes to the bottom and smaller. And you can get bigger as you go to the top. Just playing around. You get a little darker too up top too. I'm going right over my white. Do a little doodads coming down here. And then take that pink, play around with it over here. So your eye is bouncing all around this page. And that's what we do, we do the doodles. <laughs> I know it seems like a crazy kind of tutorial. I mean, you, can, you can take the green, you can make stripes. This is just all about fun. Crisscross the stripes. I just really want people to play with color and paint. You never know what can come out of it. You know? Do a series of things like this. You can add some lines to this one. Almost like the lollipops. Very therapeutic. I probably can sit here and paint these kind of things all day. All right, maybe I'll go back in and do across the whole thing with lines. Or just the sections that I painted earlier. These little, now they look like little lollipops. Maybe just go like that. See, you just let your brain wander. Just play with the color and the shapes and some pattern. And you can create something really wonderful. 
I didn't even expect myself to do the lines, but now I'm going to do the lines because I really find them extra therapeutic. And then I'm going to take the pink and do the same thing. Then we're going to be a little bit red. So look at that. Just playing with line, shape, color, all the things that you think of when you're doodling, right? Doodle, people always doodle in there when they're chit chatting on the phone, talking, class that they're bored of. <laughs> Done that many times. And there we go. We've created some kind of cool pattern, right? All those little lines. You can get them darker and deeper if you want to. You can put some darker ones in. Throw a couple of little dark ones in. More patterns. Um, in the circles that you created, maybe put a circle within a circle. Now we're getting really, really super creative. Dots around the circle. This is what it's all about, guys. See, when I'm doing dots, little teeny dots that went around all one circle. So more teeny dots. The more you play with pattern and color, I don't know, I just find something very free about it. So I'm going around the circles with the dots and then a circle, then a circle. And more circles and then a circle. Just playing around with that. So let me know what you think about these kind of abstracts. Do they frustrate you? Do you like them? Um, do you find them therapeutic? Do you find them frustrating? Um, not everybody finds them therapeutic, so I'd love to hear what you think about them. Please leave a comment in the comment section. You know, it's just, do you like abstracts? Do you like even this tutorial? <laughs> I like to hear feedback because it helps me create YouTube tutorials for people who want to see them. Anyway. That's what I'm doing today. Now I could have done these little stripes going across the other side, but I decided not to. So we're just playing today. So let me know what you think. And then we move the tape. It's like an instant frame when you do this. And voila. We have a fun little abstract, stress-free painting tutorial. Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. Please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorial is up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Come on, come on over here and have fun. <laughs> and also check out my Patreon where I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. The live stream is great because um, it's like a live class, you know, and you can ask me questions and I can answer them. Um, you know, you don't, I don't really do that. I, I kind of did some lives on YouTube, but I don't really do them as much anymore. I do it on Patreon. So, you know, there's a link in my description box to that. So thank you guys again, and I hope you have a stress-free day. Try to relax. Try to just play with paint and color and have fun. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.